The GA Hour with Colin Parkinson is brought to you by Paddy Power, home of the Money Back Special. Well, when I started running, I suppose I didn't stop, and when I got the chance to go, I said I should go, and so I opened up. We were only the small little fish out there, so we are, and uh, we're trying hard to make it through. But it's hard to get the breaks when you're the smaller fish. Because I love this county so much, you know, and it's just, I'm delighted that the lads, the lads did it for the people of Walford today, because, like, I, I'm, har- I'm heartbroken. <laughs> Welcome along to the football show, uh, Matty Ford's debut today. Matty, congratulations and welcome to the show. Delighted to be here. <laughs> Conan is here as usual, I always say that. Now I have to pull you up on something, Matty, because you've completely flown under the radar on having a testimonial two weeks ago. Poor Gooch got lynched <laughs> all over the country. Um, two years, was it two years ago last yeah, year? Poor years. Gooch, he was hung, drawn and quartered. Everything that's wrong with the GEA <laughs> was the Gooch. And here's Matty Ford with a who's who of GEA heads down at his testimonial two weeks ago. Explain this. I think you're being a bit harsh to start <laughs> there, Willie. Um, it wasn't a testimonial thing, really. They've retired me while I af- actually haven't said yet that I'm officially retiring, while I more than likely will. I haven't actually said it, but um, no, a couple of lads from my own club and actually from two from outside it got together and decided something should be done. I wasn't particularly um, enamored with this, to be fair, at the start. Um, they didn't tell me a whole lot about it. I obviously knew what was happening. Um, turned up on the night and look, as you said, there's there's some, some of the best uh, football people in the country were there that night. Unbelievable night. I think there was about 900 people there. Um, you know, now, you know, it was, it was a lovely thing to do, but I, I always felt that it shouldn't have been done because, you know, I don't have all Ireland's. I don't even have provincial titles. Um, but they were adamant we're going to do something and the couple of fellas in particular that, that done it when they get something in their head it's very hard to get it out with. Yeah I think it's a nice thing though like I mean I think the Three O'Shea's did something recently as well like I mean what's r- I don't see an issue with it it's a nice to say thank you like I mean you're an all-star from Wexford in football they don't grow on trees <laughs> on trees down there like I mean that's the way I look at it. Yeah I think Legends of the game should be celebrated. Like not to blow smoke up your arse here, Matty, but like I'd be nice to him on his first day. <laughs> yeah, but like and I always complain about like Paddy Bradley never got anything. He did, he didn't even retire from Derry say and like for me growing up and like he was my hero and then suddenly he's gone and nothing to celebrate. Like, you know. Yeah. That's why I like retirement statements and I think sort of testimonials is another nice wee sort a similar of thing, yeah. yeah. So our own Stevie MacDonald was down there. So you've obviously hit it off with Stevie, probably international rules, was it? Yeah, it would have been. You no, know, we would have played him a good bit around that era, but you know we played together in all four and all five, and like any most of the lads was on that trip. To be fair, you know, anytime you'd see him, you get on very well with him. And, you know, he's he's a great fella. He's a, he's a fairly sharp, um, you know, smart. He was very similar to myself, but um, you know, a great fella and a you know fantastic footballer as well. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're going to start off here, lads, today because Donny Smith has. It looks like it's a proposed one match ban, right, for eye gouging. Now, eye, gouge, uh, eye gouging is not a regular kind of incident that happens in the GA. It's more of a rugby kind of thing where you're at the bottom of a mall and somebody plucks the <laughs> puts their finger in your eye. You don't see it that much in GA, and I, it's not really it's not really legislated for in the rules, is it, Conan? Like, I mean, a headbutt, a box, it's all more than one game ban. Tony Smith eye gouges, and he's going to get one game ban. I don't think it's long enough. I don't think it's long enough either. In the rules, it's a well, are you guys in it? It's striking and it's um, attempting like to kick with minimal force. If you kick with proper force, that's too much ban. There's spitting, which I think is very lenient as well. One match ban for one that. for spitting, but um, it, it's his minimum one match ban. Like so, it, it doesn't it doesn't actually specify how can you get more than one match ban. And I think they should really be looking at something like that. And I was sort of going through to see like how, have they sort of tied their own hands here with it and. Did, like th- there's one rule that says um something that's sort of bringing discredit to the association so like misconduct that does that like you know it's again it's not very clear D- can that can that come into yeah. it like you know, we were talking about that with the selector that ran in on the pitch down in Kerry and or you know and hit one of the players a box and he w- he only got the month ban so there's some weird ones getting the lower end of the scale what's your take on this um. Matty. Yeah, I've had a few bans for various different things in my time. Um, one was for walking on Shane Sullivan. I got three months for it. <laughs> um, look, we're not here to bash Tony Smith, but again, I agree with you. I think, um, you know, a month uh, or a game ban is, is a bit lenient. Um, Conal is saying is dead right. To have maybe tighter hands, it's not something that we've kind of came across before in the GA, but like, is it minimal force or maximum force of gouging? You know, where is it going to stop or where is yeah. it going to start? Um, also, you know, I had an incident when I was a selector of Wexford of... Um, pushing a Longford player and I got banned for three months for it off the sideline. So, you know, I think they're they're you know, are, are we are we comparing like with like? Yeah. You know? And I said it's not about bashing Donny Smith no way, but you know, it 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 didn't look great on the telly, and you know, I think he's done well to get o- get away with a one match ban. And you didn't get any ban for hitting me in Croke Park that day that you don't remember. Do I you still remember. 
and if someone can get me footage out, I'd be eternally grateful. I, I'd be honest, I'd say if the GA had a scene, that would have banned you probably. <laughs> there had to be something in that. Uh, we'll, can we request to RT to send us in some yeah. footage from that? But anyways, it wouldn't have been on camera. But Darren O'Sullivan, interestingly, said there he was doing an interview with Paddy Power, our sponsors, and he said, I've had it happen to me. I've seen it happen to other players and there's no getting away from it. It's ugly. It's very wrong. And I have to be honest, in all the time I've played, it never happened to me and I never saw anybody else be eye gouged. Did either of you see this? I'm surprised Darren says it's happened to me and I've seen it happen before. I wouldn't think Kerry, necessarily Kerry club football wouldn't have a reputation for that kind of carry on. Have you seen this happen on a field? I've only seen it in that, to be honest, the other night in the Kerry, that Kerry Dublin game a couple of years ago. But, you know, we mentioned a few minutes ago, I have been spat on. Um, which is not particularly nice and it's probably something that should go in there with, with probably a lot more than one match yeah. but I think you should be talking yeah. about months rather than matches for, for something like that and you know I'd say this this rule could change in the not too distant future as well Yeah Conan you surely have seen it in Ulster Club football <laughs> like I mean this is the <laughs> wild wild west I have not um, like I, I do think the precedent is becoming like the worst word in the GA you know where like we looked at Philly McMahon doing it and I don't think it was exactly the same but we always have these examples now to be like, well, you know, he didn't give them that sort of ban, so you can't give it to Donny Shine, like Dream Smith. Like you like Tina McCann, remember they tried to they tried to suspend them properly, but couldn't do it because there was no such thing about it. Like Down tried to take a stance with Bally Holland and Down Patrick, but again, like Preston comes back on them, it's like he didn't do it for all the other clubs. So the GA just need to sort of address the rule book and write new rules into it. And yeah. if that includes eye gouging and whatever else and brawls and all this stuff, but have it sort of extensive that everything's covered for and and they have a bit of leeway that they can give it more for for the actual punishment for the actual event what yeah. it is. i think it's just just it was so blatant it was right in front of the camera he was grimacing it was obvious he meant to do it and then the fact that he dot he dived to try and it was like he was antagonizing higgins and higgins reacted like i know in rugby this is like the worst thing you can do like i mean how dangerous i wonder is this like can can somebody pop someone's eye out like doing so, you know what i mean why yeah. is it looked upon so so badly I'm not too sure but anyways it's it's uh, it's clearly it's clearly dangerous but we'll move on from that because there's some sin bin stuff lads and we didn't mention this on Monday that this was a question that somebody asked me on Twitter so I said I'd ask uh, one of the referees about it so um, there was three sin bins for Cavan at the same time against Galway they were down to 12 men lads three of their men and Galway had one man down so Peter Cook was sin bin along with three other Cavan players it was 14 versus 12 yeah. because of the sin bin I'm raging I missed it on Monday but anyways we can talk about it now so someone on Twitter was telling me because remember we we're talking about John Small was sin bin and he went up and sat in the stand in his jersey and just got a bib and I was thinking this is madness in rugby like they'd be on might be on bikes remember they went through that phase yeah. where they'd set, sit in a bike but you'd have to stay warm because you're on in 10 minutes but John Small was sitting in the stand and then I was wondering do you have to go and sit in the stand like is this w w you know one of the you know consequences of getting uh, a sin bin that you can't be down around the pitch area but it's not you can warm up if you want but the thing about it is you have to check in with the fourth official because he controls the clock of when you get back on so a fellow on Twitter was telling me that Peter Cook went got the black card the same time time as a Cavan player they both got it maybe well obviously at the same time you can't get a double black card can you because no one no. <laughs> no you can't <laughs> you're both <laughs> at it unless you both pull each other down <laughs> at the same time um, but anyway so Cook goes over puts on a bib and starts running up and down the sideline the Cavan lad goes into the stand the Cavan lad comes back on three or four minutes before Peter Cook because Cook hadn't checked in with the fourth official do you know what I mean so it is that just that little interesting thing yeah. when you get your black card get over there check in with the fourth official get a bib on you and just stay jogging up and down nicely up and pretending to stretch like you do when you're you know when you're coming yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the warm up yeah. so that's it but there's so much we have to learn about this sin bin but it throws a great dynamic on it like Galway went five points up when Cavan were down to, to 12 men it was it was a draw match so they made the most of this like we were talking on Monday Maddie that these 10 minutes nearly have to be seen as a power play even if you're a defensive team you won't make the most of your extra man unless you actually go man for man and then your extra man becomes very obvious so there's loads of dynamics that are going to become apparent with this sin bin definitely and you've, we've seen in rugby for years with the sin bin that you know teams you know if they can hold out for the 10 minutes maybe keep a team to three points it's it's seen as kind of a yeah. moral victory but just on the guys going off and when are they actually off or when does the 10 minutes start you know i think this is going to be clarified the next uh, or become more clear in the next couple of weeks with the ga of when you're actually off the pitch or when the 10 minutes start in rugby once the yellow card is given the, the clock starts 
And to be honest, to, as far as I'd be concerned, it shouldn't really matter whether you're standing on the sideline, you're sitting in a chair, you're sitting in the stand, once you're off, you're off, and 10 minutes is 10 minutes, not 13 or 14 minutes, because, yeah. you know, th- those extra three or four minutes, you know, that, that, that 10 minutes with for Cavan with the three, four guys off the field probably cost them the game. It could, co- it could, like, I mean, I am I like the sin bin. I think it's much better than sending a fella off for a whole game and, and a replacement come on. So there's no real punishment for the team, but there's a huge punishment for the player. But at club level, lads, there's going to be awful messing going on. Like, come on, referee, you're on seven minutes. It's up, it's up. And there's no fourth fella checking it. And there could be three lads in the bin. And the re- what's the referee meant to, how is he meant to keep a mental note of three different times starting on, you know, there was four in this one game in the bin at the same time. How yeah. the hell could have one referee like it will it will cause cause kind of problems, you know? And like even a club game where all the lads are in off the sideline, you know, it can be. Like, I mean, there can be tension there. Like I mean, it yeah. can be dangerous at times. And suddenly you're they're on seven minutes and the and the sideline starts playing tricks with the referee. It's up, it's up, come on! And the pressure goes <laughs> on yeah. and waves them back on. And is the ref like doing a stop clock there? Like, you know, is he keeping a separate watch? Not to know how he does that. Like, should he need four different watches on the other arm yeah. to start four different 10 minute ti- in timings? <laughs> That's a good, it's an interesting topic because, like, you know, at club level, if you have a man down and you'll just completely waste time, you'll kick the ball out of play and, like, you'll keep it out of play and be injured. And you could run that 10 minutes down so much easier at club level if the ref's not keeping yeah. a stopwatch of the actual 10 You'll minutes. You'll have one of your own club men do an umpire and he won't run after the ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the young fella last night in the Tottenham game, I think he wouldn't give the ball back to the Watford yeah. player. He's holding on to the your ball under his arm. Yeah. But it, it, it absolutely is a problem. It's going to be a, a big issue, particularly in club games. The National League and the Championship is fine where there's there's loads of bodies there's fort officials on the sideline and stuff like that but I think club games to start with could be carnage yeah it could absolutely be carnage the mark as well we're going to talk about that quickly because Ronan McNamee has been talking about this during the week lads and he says that everyone is going to have to change the way they defend with this and I, again I keep talking about this attacking mark I'd love if it was in for the championship because everyone seems to be positive about it and now we're going to have to wait till next year you know what I mean for it to come in but anyway he says everyone is going to have to change the way they defend at times you knew if there was a good chance you'd be beaten to the ball you'd let him get possession and then just stand him up so we all you know that you know the back will just back off you now there's some defenders won't back off they go blind headed all the time he says uh, but now you have to play maybe on the edge because if you stand him up and give him a free catch he's going to have an unpressured kick um, so it's going to be benefit to the team and I always remember um, a player both of us Mark Maddy you got four points off him I think I got him the all-star then in the Leinster final he kept me kept me scoreless John Keane he com- completely committed out in front almost to the point where I was thinking Jesus Christ if I can get one good ball here he c- like he dives yeah. like he will he w- just doesn't want you to get the ball in your hands and then you mark another back who can be a really good defender as well but he'll always let you out in front but you can't get past him do you yeah. know the difference but yeah, everyone no. nearly has to play like John Keane or Joe Higgins just you have to beat them a race out now yeah well all the Dublin defenders in the last couple of years have definitely they been do. like that they do. Really tr- and, and are very very good at it but Funny thing I was looking at the other day and what Ronan McNamee is saying is dead right. You know, you're going to have to hedge your bets a little bit because it's a strange... It, while I, I'm, I'm not sure about the, the, the offensive mark yet, I, um, you know, it has that bit of a feel. You know, McManus won several the other day when he came on the Monaghan game and all of a sudden the game just stops. It has that international rules slash Aussie rules kind of feel to it. But interesting, the first goal Monaghan scored the other day, um, you know, the defender's out in, or th- out in front of McManus and he's actually looking for the ball in over the top so you're probably going to see a bit of that as well mm-hmm. where you know there's nothing worse for a defender getting caught out in front and the ball going over your head you know it's you're talking goal straight so away so that's it so, th- so we know the Dublin fullback line like to play from the front they like to beat you a race out so like I mean every defender's going to have to do that now so you make your run and then double back because they have to commit in yep. front of you too. Like, there's a whole new dynamic on defending and attacking now. But then the high ball can go on if you're too far in front. That's what I'm saying. Is, yeah. That, yeah, but you can double back and just look for the high ball. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because you know he has to beat you that race out there. And that O'Hanlon goal, like you were talking about McManus coming on, I actually think that might have been a pass to McManus because the replay went behind yeah. the nets yeah. and you can see McManus sort of pointing him behind and then O'Hanlon just sort of took over the situation. Yeah. But that was all because they're thinking this way, you know, I'll get a free yeah, mark. It was Johnny Cooper, I think, was trying to get out in front and you can see McManus with his hand yeah. up in behind and. O'Hanlon comes in and literally blows the tube out of water, <laughs> takes the ball and goes in and buries it. Yeah, unbelievable. So didn't even call the mark. No, <laughs> but like I'm, I'm surprised more teams, I know it's only the first round of the league we've seen, but I'm surprised more teams haven't tried to utilise that um, or utilise the, the offensive mark. You know, Monaghan have made a really good job of it and have yeah. done an awful lot of work on it. But, you know, there's scores there to be had from it. And, you know, once it's in the rules, you know, why not use See it to your that advantage? That's the problem. And managers are complaining about this. Like, I mean, you can't base a strategy around that. And then it's gone for it the championship. Gone, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not in for... Like, I mean, it, that's the frustrating thing about it because 
it's just happening when it happens and I think Monaghan players might have done that off the cuff rather than necessarily putting too much into it because what's the point first round of the championship lads is all back yeah, catching it's no the, good the, you know the, yeah, but the, the good balls that was going into McManus they were actually all landing in his chest part. Yeah. normally you're telling fellas you know bounce the ball in front of him let it makes it easier for him but it looked like something that definitely More direct done, balls, done yeah. a lot of work on yeah no definitely here's another interesting little bit of information and this is pure GEA lads and I just don't know the ins and outs of all these different rules of congress and everything so look at all the debate we're after having for the last three months about these new rule changes so we have them in now some people are continuing to complain about ones they wanted in even though that's irrelevant now more Joe Brawley than anybody else um, but then I was reading this he says next year 2020 will allow for playing rule changes to be tabled um, as years divisible by five other than those coming from the playing rules committee so sorry now if that didn't make too much sense so any Tom Dick or Harry <laughs> club delegate county board delegate can bring a rule change to congress next year here we go like here we go like <laughs> well, I mean after all the complaining there's go, like next year's going to be a bloodbath I wouldn't find I wouldn't I wouldn't find even at the congress next year it'll go on for two years oh I'd say. my god so every five years so this is just stuff you just don't know in the GES so like I mean the playing rules committee can change rules in between that but every five years delegates can just uh, the counties can nominate potential rule changes and they can be voted on in Congress like I mean <laughs> when I read this yesterday just went, what the hell is the point of everything <laughs> what are be we? me and you up there arguing against each other's <laughs> proposals <laughs> <laughs> and none of them will get through in the end oh my god right so Niall McNamee's back with Carlo and we have John Mahan coming up on the show in part two he's still only 33 um, Matty real real stylish player has some similarities kicking style I think to you the control kind of he has from left to right like curling from outside in off both feet um, great for him to be back in the game um, you know up against it with Offaly but always kind of played well do you know the kind of way of playing for one of the weaker counties yeah fantastic footballer um, you know I, I was actually a bit it was a bit strange to see him stepping away at only I think he was 31 in 2017 yeah. or maybe 32 at a push um, you know still absolutely has you know I know from I know a good few of the old guys and you know he, he's a fella that looks after himself very very well um, still they are absolute goal to man and one of the best best forwards that they have or they'll, they'll ever have him you know I think it's a, it's a good boost you know had awfully got a win last week again Westmead you know to have him coming back in I know he's not fit yet he's still carrying a bit of an injury from the club championship but to have him coming back in after getting a, a win in the first round of the league would have been a big boost to him and you know you know they were very competitive last week again against Westmead so you know I know certainly. I don't think it's certainly going to do any harm to, for Offaly to, to have him back. When people think of kind of players from weaker counties, and you were a player from weaker county, but you also part of your career you were very you know well competing county division one county, but there is also times where you were completely kind of on your own, you know, being the main forward on a weaker team. And he's that now. And you think of Declan Brown straight away springs to mind. And I'm always wondering, right? It must be terrible to be one of the uh, on one of the weaker teams but then it must be brilliant that every single pass from half back line to midfield <laughs> off is going to you <laughs> <laughs> like, <I mean> <laughs> to be honest I think it's a little bit harsh on the few of the players we would have um, I know, you know over, yeah obviously when Kieran Ling and all came in like I mean yeah, it's no, shared look, around e then even when I started first like you know we had the likes of you know and you know unfortunately he passed away only a couple of weeks ago Scott, Scott Thorne yeah. um, you know unbelievable story in itself but um, you know we had likes of him he was playing uh, football with Leinster when the Railway Cup was a big deal playing with a junior football club in Wexford like so you know we always had we always had a few forwards so you know I think you're in a little bit harsh on some of the and certainly the ball wasn't coming all the time but um, you know I, I've got to know where you're coming from and certainly having looked at awfully over the last few years a lot of ball does go to players like Niall and rightly so because no, that's where you're going to get results. Yeah, and with road as well. When I was on the full forward line, I I used to try and organise with the other two lads. Right, I'll break first because I like I I wasn't a good scorer, so I like I wanted to be on the. I wanted every single. I didn't like sharing a pass because it's so hard to get a pass to begin with, and then somebody looks up and they they kick it to, to somebody else. That's if you're all breaking together, yeah. you're only getting one of three balls. Like Jesus, this is deplorable stuff. So <laughs> you were playing I, the numbers game. I was playing the numbers game. I'll get out first. I'll get all these balls, and then I'll turn around and give it to you. Let's share this around. But then Genius. They, they kept running as well <laughs> and then looking for a ball. Would you not be wrecked though? Like I know what you're saying about it'd be great to get in the ball all the time, but if you were to go to man every single time, would you not be like, ah, give me a handy hand pass at some point? Ah, yeah, well you couldn't sustain it if you were a scorer. You see, I'd be just getting it and giving it off. Yeah. But if you were trying to score and run make all those runs, you'd be absolutely gone. No, you're not gonna sustain it over. But you have you have a guy that stays reasonably close to the goal, you know, you have to start bringing other fellas into play then and That's you know, it. then it actually makes it hard for the defender. Look, is he gonna take me on this time? Is he gonna shoot? Is he gonna lay it off? And then it becomes more difficult. But 
look I think today is doing that are kind of gone with the, the defensive systems you have now you know luckily we played in a time where you know you got a lot of one-on-ones which was great yeah um but you know unfortunately those are few and far between now yeah few and far between one story to finish up on before we get to John Mohan is John Horan was has been in front of the Oireachtas and he's been talking about a, a lot of different things and we talked about RT and he, he he's talking about RT and their coverage and League Sunday and probably the fact that they have four league games now and they're going to show some clubs so he says I'm going to go on the record and say I'm delighted to see RT have improved their performance in showing our games he said last Sunday night was a perfect example of it we got two hours of promotion of our games We're the na- th- we are the national games and they are the national broadcasters so I just thought that was interesting we got two hours promotion of our games because like I mean I've got a huge gripe with Sky now right so Sky have rights to the games and they have highlights rights and Sky don't use their highlights rights for anything so like they put up three minute clip of like say an all and final on their website and there's a 30 second ad you have to sit through before you get to that like no analysis no Monday Night Football like Gary ne- you know like Gary Neville and just when John Horan says promotion of our games and RT are the same as this there's no analysis show or there's no magazine show during the week on RT or Sky D- and nobody else is allowed highlights rights Air have them I think and they do, don't do anything at the moment either um, they do it during the league and fairness to them it's the only midweek GA show we have yeah. on television is Air Sport and when he's talking about two hours of promotion of our games I just find it absolutely incredible that RT and Sky can get away with having exclusive highlights rights and never bloody <laughs> never bloody <laughs> using use it them, yeah. it's, un- it's unbelievable isn't it yeah well there's definitely there's definitely room in RT for a uh, kind of a midweek preview review program um, yeah they've always had them now they haven't been great but like I mean they should they've got footage use it yeah it's something and look at it it's, it's given a little bit of a, a little bit of an opening to, to some of the weaker counties you know they were doing preview or they were doing uh, pieces on individual players and stuff like that and it just gives people a, a bit of an insight into different players and particularly players players out division three and division four and you know just you know showing games on Sunday night is well and good but it's probably something we've seen during the day on TG Cahar and I know everyone can't look at TG Cahar all day Sunday then look at the, at the review game Sunday night but you know it'd be no harm every week or every couple of weeks to try in a division three or division four yeah. game. I, I un- absolutely understand you can't have a, a camera at every single match but you know pick a game that you know potentially has the, that could be a decent yeah. game you know give the lads a bit I of exposure I said on Monday and it wouldn't take much just for your no. secondary game every week to be one of two three and four and yeah. highlight one game because it doesn't take much to keep it all of us happy down yeah. there like I mean we just want to see there's a chance my team might be on it this week yeah, I think that's all yeah. people we, want we, we all love looking at Dublin we all love looking at Kerry absolutely but you know you want to see some of the other teams that's, you know, I love Clare in, 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 in fairness you know play really good football and are really punching above their weight and a couple of other teams like that and there'd be no harm to get a, get a look at these players and see them once in a while because you know you'll get your 15 minutes during championship on the highlights programme and probably that's going to be it for the year yeah no completely agree I don't think John Horne realises sort of what he said it's like we are the national games they are the national broadcaster in what other country or sport would like two hours a week would we all be would delighted be an, would be yeah. enough yeah. yeah like you know what American now football be more like this weekend they're showing Tip Limerick so it's more than two hours this week yeah, but I take, I, your, yeah. I take your point nothing during the week Wall to wall. And the thing Should about Sky, flogging, yeah. I'm yeah. saying this: Sky flogged the Premier League to the point where it's nearly nauseating. Yeah. And with the GA, then they've exclusive rights to, and they just showed a match and nothing else. Like I know it's not their national games, and like I mean, but if you've got hi- if you've got exclusive rights with exclusive highlights rights, and you decide to put three minutes up on your website, to me that's not good enough. I don't think the GA when John Horne is talking about promotion of our games mm. that they should be standing for this and look, look at like Lake Regal these, these shows that do really well the Mikko documentary like you know Darrow Canada's yeah. thing like all these shows people are just crying out for extra GA content yeah. and it's not there during the week except the ones you want our sport yeah. which would you rather watch a Lake Regal or an Operation Transformation <laughs> on RT <laughs> there, there's another one sh- last night I kind of dozed off after the news last night and I woke up and Nevin Maguire is going around to Sligo cooking uh, beside it. Like I, that's I, I'm, I'm cutting in here now. I have to say I love the Nevin Maguire. <laughs> so I have to say this, this series is all about seafood, and I'm a seafood fan. So I'm I'm happy right, enough. Really? I'm happy enough with the Nevin one. But when it's over, definitely we'll go back and get some more GA. There was a nice bit of lobster. Now he was cooking in Sligo no, last no, night. No, actually, have to, I do love a cooking program. I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown poor I don't Nevin. Think he in fell there. asleep at all. <laughs> <laughs> I actually fell asleep during the oper- op- Operation Transformation. Anyways, that's not what we should be talking about here. Finally, uh, league crowds are up. Um, so this will shut us right up, Conan, because we were giving out shit last week about the increase in ticket prices and we were saying that if the product isn't as good and you've got a new rules committee a- admitting that the product isn't as good, why on earth would you increase prices? That's like Nevin Maguire in his restaurant, <laughs> like upping his prices 
when people aren't going in. But anyways, uh, John Horan did say this because this is the reason he's up in front of the Oireachtas. Um, this, t- this ticket price increase, I'm pretty sure. He said that the first round of the National League sold 3,000 more se- or well, no, s- sold 3,000 more season tickets than did the previous year. And the first round, first round of the league um, attendances went from 86 to 87,000. So up a thousand, not much, very, very close, but five or extra or three extra online people are still going there's an insatiable appetite for GEA lads there's no like there's no other way of explaining it there's an insatiable appetite for the league because even though like in fair, last weekend's weather around most of the country was horrific in fairness look at Mayo and Mayo and Roscommon but people want to see the competitive matches and I think that's why as bad as the weather is that's why the attendance are probably holding stronger as they're say even getting a little bit higher because you know you've, you've derby games um, you've all games are tight you know I think the, the average uh, win and margin in the top two divisions last week was just over between two and three points so you have really competitive games and some really good games as well yeah. you know that's what people wanted to see rather than some of the turkey shoots we're seeing in the in the provincial in the championships, championships yeah. you know come the middle of the summer yeah we're all agreed that the league is the best competition that the GA have right we'll come back with John Mahan <laughs> all right so new Offaly manager John Mahan joins us on the line now John welcome to the show how's it going good good uh, busy <laughs> I'm sure yeah, I'm, it's a busy I'm time of the year I'm for sure, all managers, yeah. I'm sure you are. Come here, you're a glutton for punishment. Did nobody fill you in on the secret that Dublin are going to win Leinster this year? So we we all have to just throw our hands up in the air here and I'm uh, that's coming yeah. from a leash man. Yeah, yeah, well no, look at that means that, that we'd have nobody involved in, uh, um, <laughs> in in involved in football at Inter County level if we adopted that approach and everybody would walk away from it. I know, look, at, um, I, I, quite honest with you, a number of months ago, I had no intention of getting involved in football management again. I think I'd, I, I, uh, I was at a stage in my life where I was becoming a little bit comfort, uh, comfortable. I was in my comfort zone. And, uh, but I look, at, once I got a contract to sit down with the Offaly um, boys, um, as it happened, there was, uh, I, I knew two of them quite well. One of them had been the same um, school as I. I went to school in Cameron College in Morse. And... Um, yeah, they painted a picture and uh, um, for me, and uh, wanted to interview for the job, and I became aware that the job was mine. If um, after the interview process, I, I kind of got a little bit giddy, <laughs> <laughs> and I found, I found myself saying yes, and then I put my hands on my head after that night, uh, and I said to my wife Audrey, I said, "What am I after doing here?" Um, in hindsight, I, I would rather I, I had uh, travelled five or six times to Cormac Faithful Fields or Centre of Excellence where we train now, just to get a a greater appreciation of the drive because that's the toughest part of it I can assure you What, what is it John? What are we talking? Well it's, uh, it's, it's 2 hours 15 uh, each way you might make it 2 hours 10 on the way home uh, but it's it's 4.5 hours and you're up there I suppose uh, between you know meeting with players and meetings ourselves and video analysis and that kind of work it's an 8 hour shift so yeah. it's, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite hefty Jeez it is like I mean when you look at the, the hours that have to be put in, even yeah. looking at tapes, talking to the physios, yeah. talking to strength and conditioning. I'm a, like yeah. a, when was it last? 2008, you were Ten. with Ross Cox. Yeah. Like it, it must yeah. have changed an awful lot since then. I, I, I was blown away. I thought I had an appreciation because I would have been close to some of the male lads down here, Pat Holmes and Noel Kennelly when they are involved and in more recent times, Stephen Rochford. And, which I, I just underestimated, to be quite honest with you. The magnitude of the workload now has just shot through the roof. I yeah. mean, it's nearly 30 years since I got involved in management down in care. And back in those days, <laughs> there, were, there were times I felt I had to drive the bus, never mind book the hotel. But, uh, <laughs> yes, it, it, it's changed. Like, I mean, and now you've got a, a team that you've got, you got to manage offside, and you just alluded to them there, uh, Colin, uh, you know, your strength and conditioning and your GPS uh, guys and all of that. It, 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 it's a minefield. Uh, the whole thing has taken off in a direction uh, it is what it is whether you like it or not but it, 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 it's a huge level of engagement now and very very time consuming and I'm talking about Offaly who are a Division 3 team and but yeah. it's the same right across the board irrespective of, of, what, of what division you're in um, I, I think that's uh, fairly accurate that every team uh, and there's some club teams and, and, and with a, a similar kind of investment in time so it's, it's very very demanding yeah it's crazy stuff altogether you mentioned the interview mm. there and uh, you were re- recommended by uh, a panel first a committee and Vinnie yeah. Claffey was on that committee so like I mean Vinnie'd, right. know, Vinnie'd know a thing or two about football and then I saw a quote from you I thought it was funny you said I sat down with the off- I sat down with the Offaly County Board and after an inquisition 155 questions they thought it might be fit for, for the purpose and I'd love it to is, and, uh, I'd love yeah. to get an idea of what an inter-county interview manager interview would be like 
Ah, uh, but look, you'd want to see the contract that I was made to sign. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in that business work related where we we deal with contracts, but this was uh, something else, and uh, it was it was made very clear to me if I stood out a line that I I I was gone. <laughs> so I did I did put my signature, and I was smiling at the county chairman when he presented this, and. Uh, I think it was as a result of of, of fallouts in previous years. Yeah, you know, last the, year, last uh, year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there had a lot of, uh, I suppose, um, turmoil and turnover of managers, and they were just trying to get it right. But it was made quite clear to me uh, what I was entitled to as regards gear. I think I'm entitled to one one tracksuit bottom for the for the, for the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, but you're uh, you're well yeah. used to that kind of dis- discipline yeah. uh, from being in the army. Yeah. So, like, I mean, you're well able yeah. to take orders, right? <laughs> Well, I maybe I I I thought I was uh, taking and on a job them. where I might have to give them. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to give them. Well, I was I was taking them on that occasion anyway. Look, so, it is what it is. It, yeah. it is what it is. It's a bit of, a bit of fun. I'm not. I didn't get overly excited by by it. I think uh, it was a box ticking exercise that they had uh, um, decided at, at county board level that they had to introduce for whoever they appointed. Right. Well, it, no, but just even as regards. They'll ask you what's your plan. So will you have to have your had your manage oh your yeah. backroom team in place, oh your yeah. strength and conditioning, yeah. and will you have to tell them what style of football you like? Like, will they be asking you Absolutely. stuff? Absolutely. Like Every single one of those questions is just mentioned there now uh, um, came up for discussion, and uh, yeah, exactly down to the style of football that I, I will adopt with the team, and uh, you know when I um, the number of cases I'll be allowed to train, and when we could commence training. Obviously, that's a new departure now. It depends on when you're. When you um, depart from the championship the previous year, I think it was mid-November, so there was no formal en- engagement uh, as regards team preparation part of that. All of those things are sacrosanct. Um, you know, we now provide a, a detailed list um, in season of where we are. That's obviously for the anti-doping agency of Crow Park, but they have to know exactly where we are in advance. And uh, yeah, there's a huge uh, myriad of issues have have um, come into play that were not there in, in previous years. And in many cases, a lot of it is a good thing, the sort of transparency right across the board. But it was made quite clear to me, you know, um, down to budget uh, budget issues, you know, what was av- um, available to the team. And, you know, that was made very clear to me. Right, OK. So anything outside of mm. that, you might have to try and, you know, raise yourself or whatever. Well, well, uh, look, uh, it's, it's working okay at the moment. I have to say, the county board uh, in Alfley have been very, very fair. I mean, one thing that was blown away by was our centre of excellence. Uh, we haven't got anything like it down here in Mayo, and very, very few counties um, would have as good, I'd say, as what Kakorma calf. Right. Four fully flood, fully, four fully flooded pitches here. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's it's state of the art. It's absolutely um, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, beautiful. After tough warm up area, they've got um, dining facilities, not to mention a state of the art gymnasium there. And it, it's a centre of excellence that's used by all teams, hurling and football. And uh, I was there a couple of weeks ago, I think there was about 150 um, uh, lads togged out and girls. Was, uh, the girls were trained there last night. There was about 30, 35 um, girls trained with the African football team. So I have to say they deserve great credit for that. They're ahead of the curve. Um, in that regard, as regards their centre of excellence. Yeah, and in fairness, while I don't n- need you to get into it, I know the Offaly County Board come in for a lot of criticism at times, but they've also got an unbelievable mm. stadium in O'Connor Park and that centre of excellence. So now that they have those yeah, two done, not, maybe yeah. they can start investing maybe more into the teams or something, because that has been... Yeah, well, I think it maybe, it, look, a lot of counties are suffering with the, uh, with the lack of um, coaching at schools level. Yeah. And I think that's where the uh, engagement has got. It's got to um, start um, early in both the hurling and football. And uh, I know there are some counties that have been very proactive and very dynamic in, in getting that up and running. Tyrone springs to mind where they have invested very, very heavily through, uh, through a supporters club up there in, in getting the very, very best. A lot of them former inter-county footballers. And we just started down here in Mayo um, in recent times. We've got a, a, a great bunch of lads time headed up by Tom Riley down at under 14 levels, something that I... I mentioned here 20 years ago that we should be spending more time in uh, engaging and mentoring. A lot of inter-county footballers walk away and hurlers walk away from their inter-county careers and they're never asked to get involved. Yeah. Here in Mayo, 15 years ago, Kevin McStay and, and Martin Carney um, produced a blueprint and uh, you know, as, as regards the um, um, a mentoring program for underage footballers, it never took off. I don't ask me why, but they have kicked started it here now. But that's required in, in a lot of those small counties that are struggling because you need that kind of investment um, and getting a resource like inter-county footballers and hurlers and, and, as I say, perhaps remunerating them for their, for their time. But uh, I think that's, that's a big requirement. Otherwise, we're going to have a lopsided championship and you're going to have the strong getting stronger and the weak getting weaker. And you mentioned there, why would I get involved in inter-county football when it's a foregone conclusion that Dublin 
uh, are going to win Leinster and perhaps win in All Ireland. So you've got to you've got to adopt a different kind of a approach to it. And um, I look at I I, I realise uh, the Offaly um, situation might take a while, but you know I've got 30, 30, 32 lads up there at the moment. They're bursting the guts. They mightn't necessarily be the best footballers in the county, but the guys are there are very very interested. They're, they're great pride in playing for the county and they want to do the very very best for them. And that's their choice of pleasures. And it's uh, to put their hands up and say yes, I'd like to I'd like to be a part of this. And I'm grateful for that. See, you were frustrated by some players not committing. So Michael Brazil, Sean oh, Pender, Connor McNamee and Brian Dart. Well, Brian yeah. Darby turned a chance to come back out of retirement. But you've had fantastic news this week. You might, you obviously know this news a little bit longer than mm. everybody else. But like it's become public yeah. this week that Niall McNamee's back. So that's a huge coup for yeah. you. Yeah, well, and just the, 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 the names you just mentioned here, um, uh, um, Colm, in your... Um, as part of this discussion, like I mean, some of them have very, very valid reasons. Uh, some of them are travelling. I know uh, Michael Brazo, I think, is travelling. There's others who are just committed to uh, third level education and uh, they just couldn't see, they didn't have the motivation or they didn't have the time. There are many others. There's about uh, 10 or 12 guys. And I, you have got to respect that. That's the, the a modern reality. Some guys kind of make the kind of a lifestyle choice and certainly make the time commitment to get involved with inter- inter-county football. It's a huge commitment. Like yeah. I, mean, a, a, I mentioned lifestyle there. Just, these guys are training, like, I mean, you know, in our case, like, I mean, we're, we're training collectively three times a week. But um, uh, that involves a game now. I, I'm collectively training twice at the moment and I have a game at the weekend. But there's, it, it, it just embraces your a complete li- a lifestyle, you know. But yeah. getting back to, to Niall McNamee, I... Uh, I went to school in Carmel College most, um, and Niall McNamee's dad was a couple of years ahead of me. Uh, I knew um, uh, um, John McNamee's dad and Paul, um, Niall, Niall's um, uncle, and I would have been very, very familiar with the uh, um, fantastic football that Niall uh, McNamee is, and indeed his brother, um, Alan, two very, very talented. I have their first cousin, Rory, on the on the squad. He's, he's a young man with a, a hopefully a bright future ahead of him. But um, yeah, we were thrilled a bit he got, he, um, to, to see him coming back. He picked up an injury. In that, um, uh, in their defeat in the Leicester Championship to, to Mullinyaka, I happened to be at that game. I saw him pick up a nasty knee injury with four minutes or five minutes left in the clock, and uh, it's only now he's beginning to return to, to train. So he's not fit to play football at the moment, but he's back in our in, in our camp, and uh, hopefully he'll form a uh, part of our panel in in, in due course. Yeah, because it kind of changes things around now. You mentioned Rory McNamee, you've Nigel Don to come back, you've you've got uh, Niall yeah. McNamee. You've Anton Sullivan, yeah. and suddenly then you have Shane Horgan who came in as a transfer who will do a lot of work for you. Suddenly you have a nice little forward line building there. We have, and uh, Bernard Dallin, like, I mean, who's Bernard a, a, again, yeah, he's a guy that I would have uh, you know, heard about and read about, and the, even looking at uh, Monday morning papers and match reports over the last couple of years, you see this guy, Bernard Dallin, who featured quite significantly in all games, you know, uh, you know, taking on big scores. He's a very talented footballer. And those guys you mentioned, there are. There are. They're, they're certainly they're, they're talented footballers and there's a lot of good talent there. And it's a question of building a bit of confidence in the team. And uh, unfortunately, they, the, the defeat we suffered last week against Westmead didn't help in that regard. Uh, as we know, we were, we were eight points up in the second half and managed to lose by a point. But nonetheless, I saw aspects of a game that were very, very encouraging. And uh, yeah, that's something we've got to build on. And... Um, but in this league, uh, I'm worried to be quite honest with you, every game is a tough game. We're out against Longford this Sunday. They had a great victory over Louth. Division 3 football is hugely competitive. It is. You know, I, I, it's more competitive. I, I think the lower divisions are way more competitive than uh, some uh, Division 1. I was at I was at the Roscommon Mayo game now, albeit dreadful conditions last Saturday night. But uh, I've watched Division 1 games in recent years, and uh, I would argue that um, Division 3 and Division 4, you'd have way more... Now, the quality and the standards mightn't be as high, understandably, but the, my God, the competitiveness of it and uh, the closeness of games. So yeah. I well, would imagine there would be lot, lots of games in this uh, division where a point or two would separate teams. Well, well, that's it. And whether this Tier 2 All-Ireland comes about might help it. But the reality mm. is for Leash, Offaly, Longford, Loud, yeah. all the counties yeah. in Lens- Westmead, the se- yeah. Carlo, the season is the league because we know Leinster's kind of it gone is. and let's we're not being it foolish, is. it's gone. So like the se- yeah. your season is the league. So like they're really hitting this, they're really hitting this hard. It's like our championship. Yeah. I mean, these are our, our big championship games. And, uh, you know, I met a couple of supporters that were at the game last Sunday, and uh, that's what they look forward to. The, because the league, and they're playing um, at a level where teams are on the par, ability-wise and standard-wise. And so you're, you're not going to have a lopsided championship. 
Uh, now, the, the unfortunate thing is if we could eradicate some of the very mass defences that you <laughs> encounter where you have 12 and 13 and 14 behind the ball. Now, we have that in every division. Yeah. But in some of the lower divisions, it, it kind of it, 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 it goes against my culture uh, of playing open, exciting football. But it is what it is. Um, and, you know, but football has become quite boring in recent times. And I know, and in fairness to the GEA, they did uh, introduce a, a, a set of rules there to try and improve it. Now, the hand pass rule didn't. I was kind of glad to see it go because I don't think it will do an anti for the game. Um, but um, the other rules might might help. They kick out from the 20 metre line, certainly hoping to bypass, uh, you know, get it out to the middle of the field where you can maybe get a mark for a catch. And certainly the inside. Uh, um, a kick mark into um into an inside forward line is, is certainly helpful. But yeah, yeah, look at I, I, I um it is what it is, and um as you say, this is this is championship football now, albeit league. Yeah, exactly. Quickly, the Shane Horgan transfer was that an idea of yours, or was was did that happen outside of outside of your control? I tell you, I, 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 I tell you to the chance encounter I had with his uncle Eamon Horn of RTE Sam. Go just, ahead. Uh, um, uh, yeah, and I'm, as it happens uh, through my job, I would have known um, Shane Horn's dad, Aidan. Um, he wor- he works as a lecturer in, in in Dublin. I had met him a number of years ago by, by chance. So if I haven't gone to school, I would be familiar with Ballycumber, where the Horns came from. And as I say, I, I would occasionally bump into Eamon up in, uh, in Dublin. And, and he did mention to me, so by the way, he said, you know, I've been every playing for uh, for uh, Chemical Crooks. And uh, I went along to see him um, and played the Leinster Championship. And uh, made contact with him and uh, he was excited to get an opportunity to play into county football so he's been a, a welcome addition down to us and it was a little bit daunting coming down he wouldn't have known too many of the footballers albeit like myself he would have known some of them by name but he wouldn't have known any of them personally so but he's bedded in very very quickly and very well and uh, he played exceptionally well for us against Westmead last Sunday and I hope it continues for him oh, OK very good that's interesting I think a lot of counties should look into that as well because there's so many well, club players mean, around Dublin yeah. that don't get to play for Dublin because uh, they're so strong I, I have been for I've been flagging it for you. Like, I mean, similar to you see Joel Carberry going down to, to Munster and the, see the way he's flourished. And uh, I, I would certainly agree. I mean, I know the, uh, the Baskwells from Mayo and uh, Young McHugh there who came on in the Auburn Cup final. And I've watched those uh, three lads um, playing underage football for Dublin at minor and under 21. Uh, and their lineage is Mayo. And here we are crying out for a couple of forwards <laughs> on Mayo. And, and those guys are up there, like, I mean, n- not getting too much game time with Dublin. But, and, and there's, but look, at that, that, that um, rule sh- should be um, widened. And uh, in, you know, young footballers should be encouraged to, to transfer to counties. I think we, it would certainly improve the competitiveness of our championship and league if we had that kind of situation. Yeah, it definitely would. Before you go, I have to ask you about Keane Johnston, because all the talk <laughs> was about him last year and that he played really mm. well in a couple of Auburn Cup games. Then the Offaly County Board... Yeah. Uh, said he couldn't play league because he was under 20 he's still under 20 this year what's the situation yeah. with him? Well I've never met the lad quite honest with you um, I know uh, I, I am on a couple of nights that we, um, prior to Christmas when the other 20s were, were, were training I was looking out for him and uh, he wasn't there I think he had some sort of a commitment with a hurling team locally from what I hear but, so I've never met the lad but uh, um, I think he's back in t- training with the other 20s now but you know, look at we, we. As I say, we have 31 and 32 in the panel at the moment, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's reasonably uh, compact for the league of, of sufficient numbers there. But look at like uh, he and many others at under 20 level in Offaly. I'd be having a look at them when their campaign gets up and running, and it might be just a, a challenge game if they're playing there in Kilcormac. I'd, I'd make my time to go and have a look at those lads. But uh, so they are the future. But um, I know very little other than the controversy that I read on the National Newspapers last year. Quite honest with you, um, Colum, I, I know very little about the lad. I did see him play a club championship game, uh, you know, um, a number of months ago in um, in uh, at, yeah, in Connor Park, Tullamore. And uh, yeah, he's he's a talent. As a lot of those young lads that um, played on the 20 last year are. And, and again, there's a number of them this year that will, will certainly play into county football for Offaly. But they have time in their hands. Yeah, okay, exactly. Listen, come here, best mm. of luck against Longford. It's right. almost like it's almost like a mini Leinster league in that division three there. It so <laughs> It is, it is with Carlo and uh, yeah and, and Loud and whatever. It's good, it's great. It's West healthy Lee. and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, best of luck for the year, John. Thanks Thank for taking the call. Well, best, Colin. You're very welcome now. Cheers, buddy. Bye bye. Okay, so Paddy Power Predictions. We're going to start with the big game on Saturday night. It's Dublin and Galway. It's a repeat of last year's final and it's on Air Sport at 7 o'clock. Galway, kind of interesting in that, Maddie, you might not know this, but two years ago I tipped Galway to win in All-Ireland in three years. Now, I thought Dublin were going, maybe when all the legends were gone, 
they w- might not have lads to replace them. That's been blown <laughs> blown out of the water. <laughs> Just a little. So, <laughs> so I'm happy if Galway are beaten in an All Ireland final this year. That would have me um, happy enough. But like I mean, Galway need. There's no doubt they need to improve from last year. They had a great year, but they went down so badly against Dublin in that second half. Now they performed pretty well in the first half and missed a lot of chances and should have been up at half time but the second half they just went completely out of it now we know we they have lads back um this year but like we talked a lot about their system last year and paddy tally's gone and kevin walsh we he, he favors the system but they're such brilliant forwards do you really need some of these fellas working at the level that they're working especially now that liam silk is back for the full back line so you'll have Silk, Sean, Andy O'Kelly, and one of Kearns, who's small, but Silk has a bit of size. So c- can you not trust them with three lads outside them and maybe Johnny Heaney drop him back and have seven, fo- seven defenders and maybe five brilliant forwards? Do you know what I mean? Like the yeah, uni- well, look, at, particularly again, Dublin, you have to attack, you have to score, you have to train it. They're going to score, you have to train out, score them. You're, yeah. you're probably going to need 18 plus points to beat Dublin um, you know, on a good day. Um, and definitely like Galway have always been associated with really good attacking football and really good forwards as long as I'm looking at Galway and you know they've had some of the very very best but you know I think maybe with Paddy Talley gone they're going to maybe throw a bit more caution to the win but I think you have to you know you have to trust your defence you have to trust your midfield the, the nature of the game is that half forwards work back anyway but you know you can't beat the likes of a Dublin with even three or maybe even four forwards you know you need five guys up front you need to keep some of their defenders back and you know maybe the offensive mark we're talking about you know it's not you know it's not going to be in the championship as you say but you know with the likes of Damien Comer playing you know we're being told that's one of Dublin's weaknesses is high ball coming in and the likes of him there you know it can be something to exploit again you know have, how much work have they done on it or will will he be available at the weekend but you I know I think he might be back this weekend yeah no, although I saw a picture on Instagram he was away with a few friends and they're all drinking enormous pina colada so maybe <laughs> maybe he's I'd, not say, I'd say that <laughs> that was only a smoothie I'd say Just, no, no he <laughs> called it a pina colada so I'm not hanging him here he actually um, put it on there no look at I said to have to attack him and you know I I, I probably th- this league game is probably going to be a little bit too soon for me you know Dublin last weekend but you know I think that could be the, the best thing to happen to them for, yeah. the, for the first of the year we we talked about Johnny Heaney and Eamon Brannigan last year and they're their two working wing forwards and we were saying the one thing Galway have that other counties don't have is two fellas that can both work and both score so Brannigan started the league last year on fire jeez he ran out of steam completely in the championship he was like out th- and also ran against Dublin and Johnny Heaney had completely gone off the boil but they never really changed him like it's a gruelling year mm. being asked to do what those two fellas are trying to do because they're trying to drop back work like dogs but they're also trying to get back up and support the full forward line so like I mean Killian McDade is new he's been picked now as a wing forward he's the fella back from Aussie Rules I was thinking maybe an attack and half back would be better for him but like I mean they definitely now Brannigan's injured but they need to rotate these fellas like that's a that's a difficult job to be doing all year rotate it or like yeah change the system a bit so it's a bit more flexible like if Brannigan and Heaney are coming back which is fine I don't have a problem I don't think you have a problem with that like but then the halfbacks need to be allowed to go so it's not always the same it's not guys always going. them yeah you can't get back tackle 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 and then go 70 yards back up the pitch with the intention of scoring so that's where like, over a whole year yeah yeah, <laughs> like, yeah over nine months Christ. so, so I, like that's where I would have preferred to have seen like Killian McDade wing back so it's Me like too. The, the guys are back helping out in defence they're bolstered they're all tackling and then you've got these boys who can just deploy I remember Tierney McCann was saying they go randomly but it's whoever has the energy really yeah and then like the halfback will probably have more energy than the half forward because he hasn't run a length for the pitch do you know possibly let the let the midfielders drop back a little bit into the fence and your half forwards are now your midfielders rather yeah. than the half forwards running by the midfielders exactly. for the you know, drop a line is, you know, we'd often say to fellas just drop one line you know and rather than running 60 yards when someone can run 30 and you can run 30 you know, why, don't yeah. so, why don't enough teams use their midfielders like that instead of shifting your whole team arseways move them all back a line yeah, so mo- when your half forward line f- forward line drops onto their midfield your full forward line might drop onto the half forwards and all you're doing is leaving two corner backs free which might not be a huge threat and if they are there'd be enough bodies out there to you know to maybe chase them anyways exactly look at the midfielders just drop a line half forwards drop into the midfield now you still have guys within 60 yards of, of the attacking goal rather than within 90 and you know you're just saying it over a whole year it's very very hard to do that you know week in week out and particularly this time of the year on heavy pitches you know we'll take your toll and you come to summer but you know just requires a bit of tweaking and, and a bit of common sense you know we don't have many midfielders in the game that are prolific scorers so you know let them do the defending let the forwards play as forwards I think that's the exactly and they have Cook who's a great worker they have Duggan who's a great worker and and Flynn Thomas Flynn will put in a shift for you as well so like I mean use these lads smarter yeah. and let them drop maybe into the centre half back position and then let Garrett Bradshaw or Gary O'Donnell I think is smart enough at this stage of his career not to be running up and down the wing to play actual centre half back and hold it and let them be your sweeper 
Yeah, I and think suddenly when the ball breaks down then the lads don't have as far to get back up. I think it's the one place where Dublin have a massive <coughs> sorry, advantage and everyone else's depth. And that's the problem for most teams that do have depth in, in those middle eight positions or particularly the half backs, half forwards and the two midfielders in those six positions that, you know, they're, they're the toughest place to play now in the field and probably have been for a while, but having depth there that you can bring guys in and out and give guys a break um, because they're the ones that's going to do the majority of the work for, for 70 minutes every yeah. week the Kevin Walsh has said we're not going to take uh, chances he's talking about lads being out injured he says we're not going to take chances with people until they're right and we're probably a little bit later starting this year than last year but that's the way it is so like they clearly focused on the league last year and this you see this with a lot of teams in their progression and it was the same with Leash and I'm sure the same with Wexford. We hit the league because we wanted to become a big team that, you know, could compete. And then suddenly you have that respect and you go, right, lads, let's focus on the championship next year because we're, you know, we're established in the league. And I think Galway this year to, will just try to stay up, but they'll be putting all their eggs into the basket to not run out of steam like they did really against Dublin. They, they did to me look, especially the Brannigans and the Heaney's, they, they, they were out on their feet last year against Dublin. They had no gear to go yeah. into and the likes of Jack McCaffrey, sure, geez, he gave Brannigan an awful clean. And when Brannigan's a bloody, normally would be able to put it up to Jack McCaffrey. Yeah, it does seem to be the idea. And I think that those two points against Cavan were some of the most important because you know yourself, get off the, get off the marks very quickly. Like, yeah. And they want the points in the bag because I think they're not expecting to go in the same run and get to the final. And like by all accounts now, it's uh, Silk and Burke who won't be playing this weekend against Dublin, but they brought them in for this game just to try and make sure that they got the points. Yeah. Do you know, so... Yeah, I'd, I'd say you're right. They're, they're probably trying to taper it a bit more. So then when it comes to the championship, then they're fresher and ready to go. But as you say, it's only January, like, and they're looking to be playing first week in September. Yeah, you can't be banging. Like, I mean, psychologically, players, if you're banging the dressing room door in February, so you're gone by the time June comes, Matt. Well, I used to be, I was almost like thinking, when's the finish line to this year? <laughs> rather than rather than being in June, when it's the most important time going, Jesus, this, you know, you you're mentally kind of going, Jesus, it this is, has been a long trek this it, year. It is, and there's no doubt about it. It's definitely more mental and physical because these guys are trained to the last. You know, there, There's no problem with physical fitness or physical endurance, but it is mental. Um, and that's why I think you find a lot of a lot of county teams in particular find it hard um, to put two really good seasons back to back because look at it, mentally it is really tough going. Um, you know, and as, as you say, it's a really long time. I think... Kevin Walsh has more or less said, you know, they want to just, you know, consolidate themselves in the league and that home win was vital, particularly against the likes of a Cavan who's going to be there, thereabouts, you know, with, for relegation with the likes of a Galway and probably Ross Common. So win your home games in the league, you know, you stay up comfortably enough and then, you know, there is something left in the tank to push on from, from May or June onwards. Yeah, exactly. So what do you, what's your take on Dublin here? Because sometimes we wonder what we can add, what superlatives we can actually add to Dublin because like, some I hear some people trying to say that Dublin are going just on the on the back of one match after they're back from holidays and they were missing players and Monaghan are bloody good. How will Dublin probably be focusing on the championship? I think Jim Gavin's like Brian Cody. Jim Gavin would be livid if he doesn't win the league. Like I mean, Dublin will get back into this league final. I think there's nothing surer than that. Absolutely, and you know, as I said there earlier on, I think that that, uh, that loss will actually sharpen him for the rest of the year. You know, it'll make guys hungrier. The, the more guys Jim Gavin has hungry, the better for him. And you know, they will absolutely be there thereabouts come the end of the league. And you know, coming into championship, he's keeping guys. He's keeping guys reasonably fresh. Lads won't play a whole lot during the national league. He's one. He's one manager that can afford to rotate a good few players during the national league. And then come June, July time, you know, he's a lot of really fresh players and that's rare to go again. Yeah, exactly. But on just another on another subject in Dublin, Brian Howard's not the same player as a wing back as he is as a wing forward for some reason. Have you noticed that? Because he played wing back against Leash. Did he did he get he got an all star? Where, where did he get the all star midfield? Is he picked he the, the midfield? All star midfield. He was midfield, he got, was oh he mid was picked full back. back yeah. yeah. But Howard's not doesn't have the same influence and he's not around the field as much. Or that maybe he plays a different game and holds the wing back position. I'm not sure. You just don't see we saw Scully all over the place last week. Usually that's Howard as well. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't see him as much. He was taking a lot of ball off co off Comerford in the goals and just giving it on. Maybe he was wrecked. <laughs> maybe the, <laughs> maybe the hot, I'm sure he went on the holiday this year. Last year he passed up the opportunity. So maybe he was just yeah. wasn't at the physical level that he usually would be. Playing Sigerson last night as well. Like, oh you geez, know, yeah, so there you go, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to come. And Dublin are a bit more orthodox, aren't they? In their formations, like they do hold their defenders and let their attackers attack. Just yeah. what we're saying is the dream. There's a great line in the Connacht Tribune that probably sums up Galway's approach is like they allowed, like when Cavan were down to 12 men, they allowed uh, the home side to counter attack much more effectively. You know, this is Galway who now have two extra men, but they're still counter attacking and letting Cavan come at them. And it's like you have two extra men, just go and create goal chances. If you have two extra men and you say every man a man, 
you have two men not being marked. <laughs> if you play zonal, your two men just blend into a big it's bunch of teeth. Isn't it? <laughs> like, <laughs> am I speaking logic here? That how would you, you stay are. zonal when you've got two extra men? It's it mind it's <laughs> mind boggling. Well, look, you go up and score again, Cavan. Push up on him. You have two extra fellas. If he kicks long, you have two extra fellas to get around breaks. The six forwards have to be able to mark one fella. So get around the breaks in the middle. You have two extra guys to pick up breaking wall. That yeah. is huge. Yeah. Um, you know, and really go and hammer it home. Uh, yeah. Because that's what they should have done. Now I know. Look, they came out on the right side of a win and they don't know what they had to do. In fairness to them, they went five up in that time, but this probably on counter attacks, you yeah. know. But maybe, yeah. anyways, I do, t- I do see this in Ben. There's so much tactics to be uh, to evolve out of this. Like, I mean, it's brilliant. I think it's just shows a new dynamic on on the field. It's exciting. That ten minutes suddenly becomes so big if teams start reacting to it the way I think you know potentially that they should. Anyways, we'll get predictions on that one. I think we'll all go Dublin, will we? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so start Jim Gavin hasn't lost two league games in a row ever. ever. No. I think he's only lost two league games ever, has he? He lost to Cork, he lost to Derry, he lost to Kerry in a final. And then Galway. Did he lose to Derry? They lost to Monaghan. Derry and Celtic Park. destroyed Derry in the final one year, didn't they? Did they lose to Monaghan last year? Lost to Monaghan too, yeah. Yeah. So Monaghan twice. They've only like he's only maybe lost five (coughs) league games since he started. It's a handful or less anyhow, but yeah, Dublin. Yeah, okay, Dublin. Right, Donegal Mead, uh, Paddy Power has this four to nine Donegal home. Uh, Mead 9 to 4 like I think this is a, a Donegal uh, done deal as well Mead are, are gone back a lot yeah I think it's certain you know, Donegal had a, had a good week, a good win the weekend down and Clare is a tough place to go and win and you know Clare are a decent team and yeah. they'll, they'll beat teams in Division 2 this year um, it was a good win for Donegal. It got him off on the right foot. They still have players to come back. You know, not sure how many will be back the weekend, but you know they don't lose. They don't lose many games at home. There was one away win in the top two divisions last weekend. I know there was a couple of draws, but honey, and I think you'll see something similar this weekend. And probably it'll be a team for most of the national league. But home advantage makes a huge difference. But Donegal are a fine team anyway, and Donegal will be there at the end of that div- that league in, in, in the top of that division. Yeah, I think so too. Three Donegals, Cannon. Yes, yeah. okay. Saturday night in Bally Buffet Saturday couldn't be night. anything worse. Yeah, for ba- we know Bally Buffet is one of those horrible places <laughs> to is. go. There's a fortress, so you're meter in big trouble there. Um, um, then we have Saturday night. We have Division Three Westmead at home to Carlow. Four to nine Westmead. Nine to four, Carlo. Westmead beat them in the O'Byrne Cup. I'm not sure how much stock Carlo were putting into that. We know what Carlo are going to bring to the table. They had a great win last week. They're very, very hard to score against. Um, I think Leash. I've repeated myself now. Leash showed them up that if you don't commit to their counter attack, they don't really have that much else because outside of Broderick, they won't hurt you. So will Westmead be tactically smart enough? Pascal Callahan's their coach. I think they will be, and I think that'll be enough for Westmead to beat Carlo at home. Uh, I give Carlo a good squeak here. You know, I think it's Westmead's maybe fourth week in a row. Oh, um, that's true. You know, too, they've yeah. played the Bourne Cup final, they've won that. You know, they had a, they had a tough win against against um, Offaly last week and had to come back from from a long way down. You know, Carlo, in fairness, you know, while you're saying, you know, they, they kind of really only have one way of playing, but geez, it's very effective. You know, did a huge win at home last week against Ligo. I I definitely give Carlo a chance here. Okay, so you're going for Carlo. I go for Westmead. I go for a draw just to keep I'll it neutral. Tra- well, it, it could be a draw because these defensive systems tend to be very yeah. close. Do you know, like Fermanagh and Cork. The more you think about it, we tip Fermanagh, but then you're thinking this is going to be dour. In a dour, get one five to eight points. <laughs> like there was a draw. <laughs> in hindsight, there was a draw written all yeah. over that, and we didn't really see it. So yeah, I'll take the draw. Is a good call. So one of us has to be right on that one, lads. <laughs> Leash um, at home in Croke Park. We're like the new Dublin lads. We have a home <laughs> match in Croke Park. Uh, two to seven, according to Paddy Power. Ten to three, Loud. I'm going for a Leash home win. The last time Leash played Loud was three years ago at home in a Moor Park in the league. A Loud hammered Leash. But I think both teams have been going in different directions since then. Uh, fancy Leash to win this one. Yeah, if Lee, just wondering if Leash get to the Super 8s, can you play your home game in Croke Park? This year <laughs> Maybe not after having Leash. that one. Um, I, I can't campaign again. I could, yeah, I could be showing up here now. I'll say, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Find me where I said there was anything wrong with that. No, I think, uh, yeah, I'd look at a fancy Leash. You know, the really good win in Down last weekend. I know Down are in that world we use a good bit or in a bit of transition, but you know, to go up there and win win reasonably well is, is a good sign for, for uh, Leash. You know, I think they're definitely a team that's going in the right direction. Yeah, Conan. Evan O'Carroll inspired Leash. Let's do it. Evan O'Carroll, yeah, yeah really coming coming to the fore. And remember Colin Murphy, remember that name, lads. He's another uh, new kid on the block who's top, top class uh, player for Leash. Right, uh, this is Sunday's games now. Cavan are home to Kerry, lads. Kerry are Cavan are five to two. Kerry are two to five. Um Kerry getting a lot of kind of good press for scoring 11 points at home which is very very unique <laughs> in that Kerry team are everyone's being positive about Kerry because they scored 11 points <laughs> at home lads I mean there, there's no logic to this now the reason people are being positive is because Tyrone only scored 7 against them and only scored 2 from play so everyone's thinking Peter Kane is fixing the defence 
um, fellas dropping back, half back line, holding their positions. Now I know that all sounds good in theory, but long term that won't work in Kerry. Like Kerry have higher expectations than winning games at eleven seven. They won't stand for it. This is Kerry. Like Kerry and Dublin have the supporters just won't stand for turning into a defensive team. So it's a work in progress. We won't gonna, we're not going to make any judgments until we actually. This this is the deferred game. I'm pretty sure. Um, at the weekend no it's actually not we won't see Kerry until maybe the next uh, weekend to see what extent this has gone Um, but like I mean that's it after the game Peter Kane was talking about turnovers 13 turnovers in the first 20 minutes so clearly we have class up front but what I want to see from you lads is work rate I want to see turnovers and I want to see lads dropping back and helping the defence that seems to be Peter Kane's uh, motto yeah look at and what you're saying about Kerry people won't be too happy that's probably dead right but look it's a really good starting point you know from turnovers you will create chances as well um, you know attack is the best form of defence and from turnovers you will always create chances and probably even goal chances um, but a little bit like Galway you know they probably want to get off to a good start get their first two points at home again you know who a team that'll probably be a rival for getting to that Division 1 league final in Tyrone and you know there's obviously no love lost there either so you know it's a match that they really want to win but you know, there's definitely uh, scope there for improvement, but I think Kerry have the they absolutely have got the players to do it. Like David Clifford to come back as well. Um, you know, I think you'll see Kerry scoring more than eleven points as the league progresses. Yeah. So they had last year the half forward line against Galway because we mentioned this on Monday show. So Peter Kane's coming in to fix the defence, and that's fair enough that they conceded ten goals in last year's league. But Eamon Fitzmaurice had a clear shift last year in going for real all out attack. The year before, remember, he used to play Paul Murphy centre forward, yeah. and he'd work back, and like he did tried to shore up the defence it didn't work they didn't win in All-Ireland and the demanding Kettery public are like well Jesus we're playing out of shite you know we're getting too many men back and now Peter Kane's kind of doing maybe what Eamon Fitzmaurice flirted with for two years didn't work Eamon Fitzmaurice came out of that tried to go attack and that blew up in his face and now Peter Keane is kind of back in playing Jonathan line wing forward working hard getting back and the half forward line for example last year against Galway was Kevin McCarthy Sean O'Shea Stephen O'Brien and they played wing forwards Kevin McCarthy Stephen O'Brien have no interest in doing that do- dirty work nor do you want them to yeah. but now Kerry are going to have to Sean O'Shea will do a little bit of both he's class but like I mean this is the whole thing for Peter Kane is he's got so many scoring forwards are you only going to have them in the full forward line and you're going to pick the two wings as non-scoring workers or how are you going to get this balance right surely they have too many too many top class forwards to not have like some of those players in the half forward line as well, right? But you Just see, that's what Eamon did, and that if you don't have really good workers that are mad for work in that middle third in the half forward line, are you going to start conceding yeah. goals? You know, no, the idea, like the idea of being more defensive, it, it does give you a shorter window as a manager. Like yeah, as you said, the public just turned on Fitzmaurice a lot quicker than they might have if he was playing good football. But if you think it's the only way that you can win, then you might as well have to you're going to have to do it at some stage anyway like you know otherwise you're going to lose your job playing good football yeah he's lucky in a way that Kerry conceded 10 goals in last year's league that that's kind of the starting point look we've only <laughs> yeah. conceded seven points last year 10 goals and that looks good on paper I think he'll I think he'll get a little bit of leeway to be fair you know he's only he's only getting started out you know it, particularly during the league if they're picking up wins they mightn't have to be scoring 214 every day you know I think it, it'll obviously have to be a different come championship because scoring 11 12 points is not going to do but um, you know you can have good guys, you can have scoring guys in your forward line, but to have to work really hard, you know, and a guy that springs to mind is Paul Mannion last year. He made a couple of tackles, I think it was in the Tyrone game, one on ones back in front of the goal, they were unbelievable. If you get forwards doing that, now all of a sudden you don't have to be as defensive if the go- if, if that particular player is prepared to work hard enough. And look, at judging by 13 turnovers in the first 20 or 25 minutes, guys all over the field are doing it. And if you get that, you know, maybe you don't need to be as defensive as I said, it's going to create more chances for you as well. That's the thing. I think that's g- Dublin are very lucky to have Scully and Howard who are mad for work and have class, class that can score. And yeah. Galway have Heaney and Brannigan, who are mad for work and can score. Not every county can get those lads that can score. Like it's almost, a lot of the time it was how dogs were put wing yeah, forward. It's one, or, it's one or the other. One or the other. And if you're very lucky to find a Niall Scully or Brian Howard, you're, you know, you're onto something really good. And maybe that's what Kerry are going to have to try and um, uncover. Their potential half-back line of Gavin White, Paul Murphy and Thomas Sullivan. Thomas Sullivan... He was hitting five points from play for Dingle this year in the championship. Like he's really come on as an attacking wing back. He's uh when you've got those three going forward and then you have Jonathan Lyon maybe dropping back. And this is another thing I remember Tyrone used to do brilliantly back in 08 when the BG in the other semi final. Jordan and Hart were given license to go forward and the Malins in this world would be dropping back into their positions. And it's again it's such an old school, easy tactic. Yeah. But that works. Like go lads, put your really fast attacking lads in your half back line have two lads that can cover for them or even have midfielders and they're just licensed and usually the wing forwards marking them 
probably don't want to sprint forward on you know what I mean yeah. the guys marking were, the half hours marking were probably already back anyway so you've d- you're, you've really good footballers and really good scorers coming on to ball moving towards the opposition goal it's, yeah. it's kind of a no brainer as you say you have your half hours automatically just dropping back a line or your midfielder dropping back and your half hours dropping into midfield just to cover and you know you're not leaving yourself exposed at the back either exactly we go for Kerry here do you have anything to add yeah, there no I was going to say Shane Ryan's an interesting one in goals as well like yeah. all the points they're mad to get him out the last couple of years and now he is out and he's playing forward for his club so I haven't seen much of him but I assume he's a bit of a, a, a player like if he's playing forward for his club. Sullivan said that he w- he was lynching Peter Crowley at one stage, which is oh a really? nice sign. It was his debut, and he's taken Peter Crowley, Jesus who's you. who's one of the older lads. So that's yeah. a good sign. C- from Kerry, him. Kerry, just maybe. What? Kerry, just about. Kerry, just about. What about you, Connor? Yeah, Kerry. Yeah, I'll go Kerry here as well. Um, Ross Common, Monaghan here, lads. We won't spend too much time on this. Ross Common are fifteen to eight outsiders. Monaghan eight to eleven. I think Ross Common can give Monaghan a good game here at home because they're clearly playing a more defensive style. Monaghan don't tend to really like playing against those, sti- those styles. They're trying to evolve away from it. I, I, I might throw in a draw here just for keep things interesting. Yeah, I'll go with Monaghan. Like they're, I think they're well used to it, whether they like it or not. Like you know, they're they're well used to playing defensive styles, of playing in Ulster, and they always got the better of Donegal back in their heyday. So. Yeah, no, I'm going to go with Donegal, or Monaghan. Matty? Yeah, look, at any of the games we mentioned, the draw is not beyond the bounds of possibility, and even possibly other than the Donegal game, but um, I think Monaghan maybe just about, I think last weekend will have got them a, a, a huge lift and you know, going there with a lot of confidence. Yeah, okay, Tyrone Mayo, lads. Tyrone inexplicably, according to Paddy Power, and I'm not one to, to question Paddy Power's odds because they catch lads out more than often, but th- more than not, but they've won to two Tyrone at home to Mayo, who are two to one. And that Mayo team is a bloody good team. Now, their full forward line is a bit experimental, but other than that, they've experienced top-level players right throughout their team. They beat Tyrone the last time they were in Healy Park. They're 2-1. to one. We know Tyrone have got some, is- <laughs> we've got, they've got some issues. Um, Darren O'Sullivan, again, talking to paddypower.ie, he said, I got a high vantage point to watch the game, a perfect view, and the movement in the Tyrone full forward line was awful. And it doesn't surprise me that the movement was awful because I've played on teams where you look up and you might see one or two players with the ball in their hand and say, well, like, there's no point in running now because they're just, it's, not, they're, it's not coming. And then you might see somebody else who loves to give it in early and you're gone because you know what's coming. And you're looking at the, the Mayo or the, the Tyrone middle third and they run everything. So why would you move? Like, why are you wasting your energy? Like, and that just becomes a bit of a cancer in the full forward line because all you're doing then is looping. You're never making runs to open up for somebody else. And it's just... It just doesn't make sense to me, Maddie, to overdo one tactic and completely abandon a kicking game. Well, you can't now because look, you still have to kick the ball. The ball gets forward quicker by kicking than any any other means. Um, and obviously, the more the ball is in the opposition's full back line, you know, the more chance you have of scoring. But you know, I agree with exactly what you're saying. We've all played in teams where that does happen, and you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to to change. And in fairness, they did through most of last year. They couldn't have got to an All Ireland final by just playing one they way. They mixed it a bit. And yeah, they did mix it, but you know, and they're going to have to do the same during the league. You know, I know uh, Mayo won that game up there. I think it was two years ago now, and it ke- I kind of think that kept them up. Um, you know, and Mayo obviously aren't a bad team overnight. Uh, but I think I've just about fancy Tyrone. You know, they don't lose too many games at home, and they'll be under. You have to win your home games in the league. They're under a little bit of pressure after last week, and you know, I think they might just have enough maybe to, to come out by a point or two. Isn't it incredible that Tyrone don't have a specialised full forward? And they haven't had one for a while now. Yeah. So, like, I mean, you look at their team. McCurry's back. He's been there before. McCurry isn't at the very top level of forwards like he misses easy chances at times when the pressure's yeah. on Peter Hart was tried in a full forward against Armagh that didn't work although your man James Morgan's top class they tried Donnelly in full forward last year he's alright like he is an option to maybe win the ball strong but not, again not a top level you're not winning an All-Ireland maybe with him like I mean they're struggling for that number f- number 14 and like they're trying Derek Hanavan he's only 18 he's too young I was reading Derek Hanavan hasn't even started a senior club match with his with his club Errigal Kieran Championship, yeah, Championship. He hasn't, uh, You can't depend on him he shouldn't even be on the panel until next year I think he's too young like I mean they're really struggling maybe and obviously their their runners in the middle third are so strong that they're finding it very hard to move away from this system when all their players look to be suited to the running game yeah like, like Darren Sullivan saying the movement was bad in the full forward line it's like well there probably wasn't anybody in the full <laughs> forward line that's why it was <laughs> bad but like it looked to be like for a lot of it and I only saw the highlights but Darren McCurry was the only one in there left himself. in there and like, like he's a hard target now you know like I mean exactly like you know so it, again that's a very tough role for him but like you know Mark Bradley found it bad enough and it's just it's it's not enough in there if you're actually trying like uh, you might as well have nobody in there like you know because you run the ball anyway it's just a waste of his time and the team's time I, I just 
I, I always sort of defended Tyrone because I, I thought this was their strength and they're playing to their strength. They run they run the ball very well, but Jesus, like uh, Mickey Hart probably won't change because he got the dollar in the final and they did it a bit better against Dublin. But yeah. they need to do something a little bit different and show it up, like you show like sort of surprise teams. Like, they, and they've got they've got class. Like you know, some of the subs that they were bringing on last year was it Mulgrew came on and scored two goals against our match two amazing goals yeah. I think it was year he before, started full forward against Kilker- against Kerry there right. last game well, but he's more of a wing forward you see they're constantly putting mobile fellas that can work there like there's, there's, all, there's yeah. no 14 that's saying I'm f- I'm playing 14 like I'm Paul Geeney and I'm not moving out because I'm the man that's going to be on the edge of the square that's my position they don't have they just don't have that which is bizarre with all the good teams they have coming through they just ha- don't have that player no they haven't and like even Lee Brennan we haven't even mentioned another excellent footballer but you know if they're going to try and keep carrying the ball here, throw a couple of guys up front and try and play a little bit different because you know teams have worked out how to how to defend against teams to carry the ball. Yeah. You, know, you get guys behind the ball and you really hammer the ball carrier because you know he's not going to look up and try and kick the ball inside. You really put, put pressure on 40, 50 metres from your own goal. They're not going to kick the ball inside. If they do, you have extra defenders, defenders in there mopping it up or you've only maybe two forwards in there. But to have to try and expand, look at... I said it's only us talk to have to try and expand and play a little bit more attacking because look at seven points it's not going to win you any game in any division um, and you know it's it'll be a problem for them unless they do unless they change yeah what, exactly what would you do if you were Mickey Hart like do, do you see any full forwards that you would play in there like it is a tough question like or do you just it is play the same way because this is where your best players are it's hard to know maybe play two and two and try Hart in there with with, with Brennan playing off him or something like that because I don't know you'd have to have a look around and see is there a specialised full forward like I mean that I think it's too early for Derek Hanavan I don't think yeah. he should be in there yet but like I mean they, they, they have a they have a clear problem Sludden and Matty Donnelly are your two perfect half forwards yeah. it's the two inside is the problem and Lee Brennan would be a great fo- foil for Paul Geeney do you know what I mean he's not a man that can win his own ball but I'd have him lurking around another fella but they just need the Paul Geeney yeah. I thought Donnelly could have been that man uh, the other Donnelly but he, he just probably not at that level of top player against the likes of a Dublin no not, well definitely not yet anyway. and look, it's really unfair Daryl Canavan he can't be expected to come in as an 18 year old no. and do that job Look, he's small in stature as well there's no doubt he's going to be an absolutely fantastic footballer but to start with at 18 or 19 years of age it's going to be playing off somebody or playing off a couple of guys and look you can't expect anything else from his father, um, you know, while well able to win his own ball, was really, really good at playing off players and he was as good a footballer as ever played the game. So, yeah. you know, you can't expect him to go in at 18 years of age and step into full forward against some of the guys that we have playing full back like Neil McGee and these and yeah. start, winning, start winning his own but ball. But the know. thing about this, Peter Canavan never had a sweeper to contend with in his life either. Yeah. Like, think about because often you hear like the Gooch and this thing and he's be compared to Peter Canavan. Sure, that's not comparing like with like. Like Peter Canavan never had played Tyrone against Tyrone. He's from Tyrone with two lads standing in front of him full time. Yeah. Sure. How can you how can you compare era with era? Peter Canavan played before me and you, Maddie. Where just run out. You have acres yeah. of space. <laughs> like do my deal. I'll be first out. There's nothing to stop you. Centre back might be out there. You've actually oceans of space to run into. That's gone. The, the idea of comparing forwards with the likes of Peter Canavan, like Dara, can never have the same impact as his father it's just imp- it's impossible it is I, I absolutely agree with you because I think also the days of guys scoring 110 or 112 in a championship match or something like that are as good as From gone play it's gone Barn, Barn, you know it's it's a, you a know, hammering, division yeah. 1 with against division 4 or something like that it's just not going to happen um, for exactly the reason you're talking about we've packed defences now the whole time most teams just by the nature of them get a lot of guys behind the ball now anyway so you know you need bigger guys in there but in fairness to Monaghan last week they were able to create space in the Dublin defence and you know when I think they had t- was a 13 or something like that offensive marks they had inside 45 yards so a few players like McManus there they're going to kick you know 10 out of 13 of them most days so you know if, if Monaghan are able to do it you know other teams should be able to create space in there as well but you have to have bodies in there or you know you can't win the ball yeah exactly the one good thing Monaghan have and which a lot of players really need is they had McManus in there who we all know about but they put they put McCarran at centre forward, who's a lovely left peg, and you know, right, McCarran's on it. Now I'll break because this lad's going to stick it on. You need someone like that, and I see too many teams now. Sludden and Matty Donnelly aren't those players, so who's going to stick it on your chest? Like Peter Colin Hart. Cavan, and maybe not Peter Hart could. You know, maybe could. Coney. You know, if he if he gets Coney's Coney yeah, a good delivery. Yeah. P- potentially, no. He uh, as a minor, he was the next best thing. You know, he didn't play for their own for a long time after that, but. I agree with you. you know, there's certain guys you know when they're on the ball. I'm wasting my time making on the ball is not coming, and you know, McCarran 
every time he gets the ball his first option is to look up and as it should be that's you know the centre forwards we all played with Kieran McDonald and you know uh, McGuigan and players like yeah, that yeah. their first option Parry Joyce will always get the head up and so it should be but look at maybe they realise you know in, in the likes of Heron they realise and look up we're kicking into a one or two man full forward line that's surrounded by you know not even um Ex- uh, by sweepers just the four defenders that are playing as yeah, defenders yeah it's a vicious circle right so who are we going to go for here lads I might give Mayo a chance there I just think that 2-1 two to one is way too long on Mayo um, I'll go for Mayo here I'll go for Tyrone narrowly as well okay a draw, draw for, is not yeah, I'm going to go for draw not, not on purpose but just we have that one covered as well <laughs> okay quickly no one can lose here right or someone has to win right division 2 Cork and Kildare 1 o'clock this is even money I think Cork again last week were odds on to beat Fermanagh I thought that was crazy Kildare are massively in transition. I was reading that, what was it, 10 starters from last year's championship was out against Armagh. And it actually makes me think, how the hell Armagh didn't beat a Kildare team last week that were missing so many players? Um, I think there was only four starting on that team. And then I was given that stat that seven of their subs had never started a league game. So Keane O'Neill is really down to the bare bones at the moment. Jimmy Highland is obviously an outstanding um, talent. He ran a muck in the under twenties last year. Have you seen much of him, Matt? Here, do, do, like I mean, he's small in stature, but he's he's top class uh, forward. He is top class. I think eight points in the Leinster final, one eight in the semi final, and ten points in the Ireland final. She's not bad, is it? Tw- that's 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 decent. But in fairness, the under twenty one is a bit like. I suppose the football we played 15 years ago there was no big sweeper bit, system yeah. stuff like that look at he still has to score and it's it's unbelievable scoring return it's nearly 30 points in three games at, at the, the top end of the championship you know a really really good footballer but it's a bit strange I suppose in the in the mid 90s the one thing Kildare were crying out for was forwards you know you take out Johnny and were really struggling now they haven't seemed to have an abundance so I know Daniel yeah. Flynn has left the panel but there's Neil Flynn there's Paddy Brophy there's Jimmy Highland you know to have yeah. plenty of them Ben now, McCormick Ben McCormick um, you know the Cribbins you know, there's, there's any amount of them but you know they're struggling with, with a few players leaving the panel Yeah. Um, and you know I think Armagh will be kicking themselves that they left, they left that point behind them on, on, on Newbridge on yeah, Sunday yeah definitely so where are we going here lads even money I'll give Kildare the away win yeah I'm going to go with Kildare yeah, Cork are the accumulator buster <laughs> so I'm not going near them yeah, Cork. Look, at a lot of people probably might have backed them last week up in up in Fermanagh. They could turn out with a big performance this weekend. You know, at home, I think I'll just about go for Kildare as well. Okay, we're all going for Kildare there. Tipperary Fermanagh lads, we'll fly through these because we're going over time. Tipperary Fermanagh eight to thirteen. According to Paddy Power, Tipperary Fermanagh thirteen to eight. I think with teams like Fermanagh and Tipperary, home advantage usually swings it for them. I don't think Fermanagh will enjoy the drive down, and for some reason Fermanagh are a nightmare to play away, but they don't seem to get the same at home. I'm go- I'll go for Tipperary. Um, to win at home here. Tip, yeah. Tip. Okay, Armagh Clare, 4 to 11, 11 to 4. Clare, a very good price here. We know Armagh are very strong this year. Armagh squeezed over them in the qualifiers last year at home. So, th- and I see Park Elser here. Um, is that not the down home, home yeah, pitch? Yeah, they're, they're suspended from. Oh, they're suspended too, home, yeah. right? So, this is a neutral game then. Yeah. This changes a little bit. Then Clare, massively overpriced, are they? I. D- I d- Look at it, it's it's a, it's a big price and they're, they're a really good team. But look at it's it's only literally only up the road from Armagh. I think you're going to have a far bigger Armagh crowd in it than Clare. True. You know, eleven to four is very very tempting. But you know, I actually like the look of Armagh this year in that division. I really do. And uh, you know, I'll I'll tip Armagh for a home win. But yeah. but again, just about. Conan. Yeah, I, th- I think it's it's like a second home almost. Like Murray's very familiar for Ar- for Armagh. So yeah, I'm going to go with Armagh. I've let the odds on Mayo force me into. Uh, going for Mayo even though I think Tyrone might win it like I mean <laughs> you know when odds may, maybe yeah. like, there's too much value there but you don't think it <laughs> yeah but there's too much value I, I think that could be the reason <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going for Armagh here I'm not going to let the clear price um, uh, sway me Longford Offaly lads I see this as an even enough money um, one but Paddy Power have it Longford 4-7 to seven favourites and Offaly 7-4 to four. Niall McNamee not back right um, we want to see what do you think here lads Longford or Offaly Matty um, I think Longford won, nar- won narrowly away in Loud last week I think um, yeah away to Loud yeah, yeah and, and, and Offaly lost narrowly home to Westmead you know they were caught at the end of the game I presume it was windy judging by it looked like a massive yeah. game of two halves um, I think again we were saying it uh, through most of the divisions home advantage I think for Longford will, will make the difference here okay Conan I'm going to go Offaly yeah just looking like at the performance last week and just looking through the team it's starting to look nice now like, and I'm, I'm going to trust Mahon that they can get a result. Too much value in this in this yeah. price. Mahan's enthusiasm has swayed me f- to go for Offaly as well. Right, Sligo down, lad. Sligo, um, thirteen to eight down, eight to thirteen. Oh, it's like I mean, this is very difficult. Down are completely, um, in transition with a lot of young players. I throw in a draw here. 
I'm going to go with Sligo. I think you know they, they surrendered very, very easily last week down in Carlo. But you know Carlo is a hard place to play in. Um, Sligo don't lose too many national league games at home, and you know Down's result last week has to be an to them. You know you have to win your home games in the national league, and I'm sure Sligo will absolutely target this one, and particularly after their result, but Down's result last week as well that they can get two points here. The the stat of the 86 league appearances amongst the whole Down starting 15, which works out at about six each league appearances. That'll tell you how inexperienced now down are. So, Conan, whether that sways you? It does a little bit, but I'm still going to go with them. Just um, just traditional county bias. I just think they should have too much. Like even in those depths, they should have enough to sort of be able to compete at Division 3 level. So, we'll go with down. Okay, right. We'll, we'll fly through Division 4 here, lads. Derry, London. Are we all going for London? 1 to 20. Derry, London, 9 to 1. We're all going with London, are we? Is that what I'm going with Derry. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Derry, I'm going with Derry, yeah. Derry, yeah. Okay, Limerick, Waterford. Limerick, 1 to 2. Waterford, 2 to 1. Um, geez, uh, this is a difficult one to call. I'll go for a draw here. To- totally sit on the fence here. Limerick have gone back a lot. Um, then again, Waterford are no world beaters either. I'll go for a draw. I'll join you on that fence. Just okay. Limerick at home. Limerick, Limerick won in London last week, which is a tough place to go. I mean, it was only by a point, and, and Waterford lost narrowly at home to Wicklow. And you know, it's it's um, it's, he's a tough one to call. A draw is not beyond the bounds of possibility. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Limerick. So Wexford Antrim is the next one, Maddie, and this is a big one for you. So Wexford are eleven to ten. Slight outsiders. Antrim ten to eleven. Antrim wouldn't really travel all that well. But at the same time, Wexford had a horrific result. We tipped Leitrim last week, but we didn't really expect the hammering that was dished out. Now, there were two fluky goals. Wexford were in control in the first half from what I'd heard. But, like, I mean, Wexford have almost gone from Banty taking over, you know, potential to get back up the divisions to almost thinking, geez, is there a way out of Division 4 for Wexford? Yeah, it, look, it could be a long way out of Division 4 for Wexford, and it could be, it could be there for a while, hopefully not, but... Um you know, a little bit like down, you know, where a lot of fellas playing that haven't got a lot of game time. And I know from my own time playing, it takes you three or four years to get yourself up and running. And Division 4 is not an easy place to do it. You know, everyone says, oh, look, you should come back out there handy enough. Um, You know, once you get down there, it's very, very hard to get out of it. And, you know, Sunday could be Sunday could be a tough day as well. Yeah, because I, I remember uh, talking to Colin Begley recently and whatever we were talking about, he kept saying, yeah, well, that's OK in Division 1. I think it was the, the new rules and stuff. That's all right, Division 1 and 2. But... D- you haven't seen Division 3 and 4 he kept going on like Division 4 is tough like uh, almost like there's new, I was like is there new rules or is there different rules <laughs> applied to Division 4 or something he says you don't know what it's like <laughs> no he's right in fairness I think it took, it took us when I started playing it took us 4 years to get out we got to the last game 4 years in a row and it took us till the 4th year to actually get out of it and every single game is just a dog fight um, yeah. it's, it's, it's really tough going look we it's the same in, in it's no difference in club football we got relegated a few years ago it took us 3 goals to get back out in other teams who won county finals shortly before us have gone down two grades since in, in, in Wexford and you know once you once you get on the slide it's very hard to arrest it and you know we're we're in trouble there as well yeah okay right and Paul McLaughlin like I mean what's the attitude towards him do people in Wexford know he's got not got a hand other managers have and have patience with him he's got he's got a second year last year wasn't great lost at home obviously to Waterford in the qualifiers are people happy kind of with, with what he's doing in there look it's a t- it doesn't matter who's there and I've said it for the last couple of years it doesn't matter who's there it's a really really tough job anyway you know we don't have the players we had 10 years ago and it's as simple as that the club championship is not as strong as it was 10 years ago um, I think we're a long way behind other teams in regards to strength and condition and going back through the ages I think you look at our same minors compared to some of the minor teams we're playing you know we're, we're way behind and you know we are starting to catch up but that's a long time away from, from where we are with the senior team and it's going to take a few years um, I look at Paul has a tough tough job and I think he ha- absolutely has got a bit of sympathy down there and he has a bit of time but um, it's going to be tough to get over OK right well we'll start with you here then Wexford and Antrim um, no, uh, last weekend's result wasn't good you know confidence has to have taken a big hit you know I'll go for Antrim. Right, Conan. Yeah, Antrim just lost by a last minute scoring in Sterry. That's so if you're yeah. going on last week's results now, Antrim have a long way down to travel to Wexford, which is does have a big bearing on it. I'll go a draw again, because I'm all over the draws. <laughs> uh Wicklow Leitrim to finish up with lads, thirteen to eight. Um Leitrim eight to thirteen. We know Ockram is a terrible place to go, <laughs> lads. It's a fortress and it's more a mythical fortress than an actual <laughs> fortress now at this stage. I'm on the Leitrim rising bandwagon. I'm yeah. gonna go for Leitrim here. Leitrim rising? Uh no, I'm gonna go with our neighbours. I think you know their, their their win last weekend will have given them a 
a good boost. Um, you know, obviously Leitrim with a big victory over Wexford, but you know, Ockram, you know, is still a tough place to go to. It doesn't matter who goes there or in what competition, and I'll go just about for the home team. Yeah, I wonder how many times Wicklow have to lose in Ockram for it not to be a hard place <laughs> to go to. <laughs> 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 all right, listen, that's all we've time for. We'll be back on Monday with Keane as usual. We'll talk to you then. Good luck. <laughs>